Okay, so now we're going to show that if we have a random sample, which means that the sample is independent and identically distributed, we're going to show that y bar, which is our sample mean, is an unbiased estimator for the mean of y. So the way to proceed is very simple. Let's just take the expected value of y bar, and we're going to have to operate on this expected value until we get that the expected value of y bar is equal to mu, which is the mean of y. So let's just plug in for what we know y bar is, right? It's just the sum from y equals one to n of y divided by n. It's gonna be the expected value of sum from i equals one to n of yi divided by n. And now notice that each term of this summation is just divided by n. So we can just, you know, write this, whatever is inside the expectation as one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of yi. So let's just start using one of the properties of the expected value, which is that we can extract the numbers, all the non-random numbers out of the expectation. So we can take this one over n and pull it out of the expectation. So this is gonna be equal to one over n times the expected value of the sum from i equals one to n of yi. And we can do this because always remember, right, one of the properties of the expected value is that the expected value of A times X is equal to A times the expected value of X. And this is a property that, that comes in very handy whenever you're trying to prove unbiasedness. You're going to use this property a lot. If A is a non-random number and we have the expected value of A times a random variable, then we can just extract A out of the expected value. Now we have one over n times the expected value of y1 plus y2 plus y3 all the way up to yn. And here we're going to use another property of the expected value, which is the fact that we can split up the expectation across the summation. So the property is the expected value of a plus b is equal to the expected value of a plus the expected value of b. This is another property that the expected value has, and we can totally apply this here, you know? So note that we can write, let me just, this is a, a piece of advice that I recommend everyone where you're dealing with uh, summations and expectations or variances of summations and so on, just split up the summation and, and write it out as, as what it is, you know? So here we have one over N times the expected value of, and this is Y1 plus Y2 plus, all y3 all the way up to yn. And we know what the expected value of this summation is going to be, right? We're just going to use the second property of the expected value. And we're going to have the expected value of y1 plus y2 plus y3 all the way up to yn. It's just going to be the sum of the expected values. It's going to be the expected value of y1 plus the expected value of y2 plus the expected value of y3 all the way up to the expected value of yn. So we're going to have 1 over n, and let's open up bracket. It's going to be the expected value of y1 plus the expected value of y2, whoops, all the way up to the expected value of yn. And just as we split up the summation in this way, we can just you know go back to the summation because this is gonna be the expected value of y1 plus the expected value of y2. I can just write it out as the summation, right? It's gonna be one over n times the summation from i equals one to n of the expected values of each yi, right? And this is a step that people typically see where you know the this expectation that is typically outside of the summation then magically appears inside of the summation, all that happened is just this, you know, it's just you, the expected value of the sum of stuff is just the sum of the expected values. And then we know that the expected value of yi is just mu, right? This is an independent and identically distributed sample. So the expected value of any yi is just mu. So this is gonna be equal to one over n times the sum from i equals one to n of mu, right? Each of these yi's is just, it, it, 
the expected value of each of these yi's is just mu, right? And then how does this follow? So here we have mu plus mu plus mu plus mu n times, right? Because we have n observations, right? So this is as if here we had, let me just use some color. This is if we had, this is gonna be mu. And then this is gonna be mu. And then this is gonna be mu. For each, ex each expected value is just equal to mu. Since we have n people, this is gonna be n times mu, right? Because I have it for person one, then for person two, then for person three, all the way up to person n. So all of this is gonna be n times mu, right? So this is gonna be equal to one over n times n times mu. Here the n's cancel out, so we get that this is equal to mu, which shows exactly what we wanted to, right? We started out by taking the expected value of y bar, and we showed that this is equal to mu. And this concludes the proof, right? The expected value of our estimator, y bar, is equal to the expected value of y, which is what we're trying to estimate, so our estimator is unbiased.